planes have become slower in the past 50 years, and it is done intentionally. At the time of Christmas or the holidays, tourist tickets are sold at a higher price. With this, the airlines review their competitor's rate. If there is any pattern that fewer people are traveling on Tuesday, then they'll provide you with a cheap ticket on Tuesday. Rarely, tickets are not available for booking. It runs on an algorithm by which prices change in real time. Also, the business class in Airways has an interesting story. iPhone was launched in 2007. Then, iPhone second was launched. Now they launch a new version every year with increased speed. And the same goes for their computers. Trains have also become super fast. But there is one thing whose speed has not increased, but in fact, is slowed. It's not like its speed can't be increased, but it is done intentionally. And that thing is airplanes. In 1967, the flight between New York and Los Angeles took 5 hours, 43 minutes. And today, it takes 6 hours, 27 minutes on the same route. That is 45 minutes more than before. Basically, in the past 50 years, planes have become slower and it is done intentionally. In the past discussion regarding commercial planes, where if we increase their speed, then it will be a successful idea. And for this, British Airways launched a supersonic plane. But that became a disaster. Why did all these things happen? Why can't they become faster? We'll discuss all these things. Firstly, understand that supersonic planes are those that travel faster than the speed of sound. The speed of sound is 767 miles per hour. So anything that travels faster than this speed is called supersonic. And that travels slower is called subsonic. And today's planes are subsonic. So to move people faster from one place to another, British Airways launched the supersonic or Concorde plane and used it as a proper commercial plane and ran it on the London and New York route. The speed of these planes was very fast. They can travel from London to New York in three hours. These planes can fastly reach the destination, but there were some problems with them. Fuel consumption was high, and they took almost 46.85 pounds per mile, while the normal planes took 18.7 pounds per mile. These supersonic planes can move only 14 miles per gallon of fuel, and normal planes can travel up to 104 miles in the same amount of fuel. These supersonic planes by British Airways were very expensive for the customers. However, the targeted audience of British Airways was high-class people. Still, it was not preferred by high-class people. It was charging more than $7,500 to travel from London to New York. It was a big amount at that time. And as they have to run fast, their design was very compact. But they were uncomfortable for the passengers and had a capacity of only 100 people. Normal planes have more capacity. As I said earlier, these were supersonic planes. So when they travel faster than the speed of sound, they produce a sound. That is called sonic boom. You may have noticed a loud sound when a fighter jet passes. That can be heard by the people on the ground. Airlines were also suffering losses. As number of cycles of planes were increasing, but revenue was decreasing. The life of any plane is not decided by how many years it works. Their lifespan is decided in cycles. That is how many times it took off and landed. On average, the lifespan of planes is 44,000 cycles. That is, it can fly 44,000 times and is retired after that. When these supersonic planes were launched, six hours flight was completed in three hours. Due to this, number of flights increased. With that, the age of planes decreased. Even after spending so much money to make supersonic planes, people were using normal planes due to their cost. Supersonic planes were not able to reduce money even if they wanted to as the cost was very high. The reason behind creating supersonic planes was to cross the Atlantic Ocean in less time. It is exciting to cross the Atlantic Ocean in three hours, but that can cost up to $7,500. Whereas normal planes take $200 to $250 to cross the Atlantic Ocean and were creating a good profit. People choose a cheaper and more comfortable flight rather than traveling faster. And due to this, the idea of supersonic planes flopped. British Airways has to stop Concorde. Concorde last flew on 24th October 2003. After that, commercial supersonic planes completely stopped running and have stopped till now. In today's date, the subsonic planes, 
even though they are not as fast as supersonic planes, still can run at 700 miles per hour if they want. It is not done intentionally. Instead, they run at 500 to 550 miles per hour. It is done because at this speed, they run in the most efficient way. That means they consume less fuel. The most important thing for a commercial plane is to earn maximum profit. That's why low fuel consumption became an important factor. With this, their seats are designed in such a way that they can earn maximum profit from each person sitting on them. If you see the sitting arrangement in an airplane, these airlines don't earn as much money from economy class. The real money comes from the business class. I'll explain to you the example of the British Airways 777 plane. This plane consists of 224 seats. From these 224 seats, 122 are economy, 40 are premium economy, 48 are business class, and 14 seats are first class. One seat in economy class costs you $876. Premium economy class costs you $2,633. Business class costs you $6,723. First class costs you $8,715. So they'll earn $106,872 if all the seats of economy class are sold. From the premium economy class, it will be $105,320. Now if you compare them, premium economy class have earned almost the same as economy classes, even when their number of seat is not even half of economy class. Now if we see business class, they'll earn $322,704. That means 14 passengers of business class make more profit than 122 passengers at the back of the plane. At the start of commercial planes, planes didn't have different classes. Seats were the same, and there was no difference. At that time, sitting in a plane was a big deal. It was so expensive that it was a luxury experience at that time. Understand it in this way, that if today someone is going into space in a spacecraft, at that time, this was the status of traveling in a plane. And if traveling in space became common after some time, then we'll see all these business economy class there too. The business class in airways has an interesting story. People used to travel in only two ways in a plane. One, those who travel for business trips. Second is tourists. Tourists book always in advance as their journey was already planned. And businessmen do it when they have to go. They buy tickets from the counters on the last day. But airlines wanted their tickets to be booked in advance, as there is uncertainty about how many people will arrive at the last moment. That's why they decreased the ticket price for tourist class and increased the prices for business class. So people book their tickets in advance. But soon they realized that for business class, the value of time is more than money as the tickets for the business class were easily booked even after increasing their prices. And then, they started treating business class differently, like they made their seats more comfortable, they changed their section, and then it was changed to a proper business class that we can even see today. One economy class seat takes 3.77 square feet space, while one seat of business class takes 10.14 square feet of space, and business class makes more profit. For example, one economy class ticket from New York to Dubai costs $1,250, and a business class ticket costs $6,140. That means an economy class seat earns $322 per square foot, and a business class seat earns $605 per square foot. That is almost double. You'll notice one more thing here, that it's rare that tickets are not available while booking. You'll find completely booked seats in case of trains, but you'll always find seats in aeroplanes. It is because they don't increase the supply according to demand, but decrease demand according to the supply. That means if a plane has 100 seats, and if 120 people want to travel on that plane, they won't increase the plane size. Rather, they'll increase their price so that demand decreases. It runs on a proper algorithm that changes in real time. As you book the tickets, their price changes. It is called dynamic pricing. In that, tickets are divided into three groups. Prices of the first group are lower. Prices of the second group are more. Prices of the third group are the highest. Running an airline business in the U.S. is challenging. Unlike industries where higher prices can signal luxury, in aviation, customers 
whether domestic or international, constantly look for the cheapest fares. Every empty seat is a loss, and operational costs remain high. There are also strict government regulations to follow. The three largest U.S. airlines, American Airlines, Delta, and United, each operate over 800 aircraft and have global networks. But despite their size, U.S. airlines face many financial challenges. One of the biggest pressures is rising fuel prices. The aviation industry is highly sensitive to oil costs, and fuel expenses make up a major portion of airline spending. The government also plays a significant role in shaping the industry. Unlike India, there's no restriction on how long an airline must operate before flying internationally. However, U.S. airlines face heavy regulations on mergers, foreign investments, and worker unions. For example, foreign ownership in U.S. airlines is capped at 25% of voting stock, limiting access to global investors and partnerships. The future of the U.S. aviation industry will depend on fuel prices, government policies, and competition, both from domestic low-cost carriers and global airlines.